Hey everyone, welcome to this special Tom's Hardware broadcast that we're doing in honor of CES 2022. Uh, we're just having some folks filter in now. We're talking uh, with Clifford Chun of MSI about some amazing new laptops that the company has just announced an hour ago. And we have, of course, uh, Michelle Earhart, our uh, our editor and host of the Tom's Hardware show here with us. I'm Abram Pilch, editor-in-chief of Tom's Hardware. And we are taking your, and for those of you who are joining us live, not watching after the fact, uh, we are taking your questions live in the chat room on YouTube or Facebook. So we uh, are really eager to get those. But um, meanwhile, I just want to say uh, hello to Cliff and uh, thank you so much for joining us. No, oh, thank you so much for giving us the time, you know, to be in here and uh, hopefully everyone will enjoy enjoy the video before and uh, we would love to show you guys even more in depth. So, so Cliff, um, what are they, obviously you released a lot of laptops, announced a lot of laptops today. Uh, what are the highlights? What are the most important models in your opinion? Well, definitely one of the major ones is right in front of me. This is our brand new Stealth GS77, which is our thin and light class. Um, it have, um, you know, the the Stealth class have been one of our best selling models out in the market because people do like to use it for work during the day, but in the same times they can, uh, you know, game at night. So this is a very thin and light form factors. You can uh, you can see the Dragon logo is very subtle. Um, and then also uh, have a lot of power in there. We are able to go all the way up to uh, the 12th Gen Core i9 and also the 3080 Ti just in this thin and light form factor. Um, and we did a lot of different reformat. For example, the hinge, we move it more into the middle. So it's uh, much more stronger and much less wobbly. Um, touchpad wise, we're also making it a lot bigger. Uh, so you can do a full stroke from top to bottom. Key-wise, we also make it like roughly about 8% bigger. Speakers, we also make it into a six-speaker system this time. Uh, so we have two speakers and four subwoofers. Um, also, the cooling, we actually do quite a lot of uh, very unique stuff this year. This is the first time we finally launch uh, what we have is called the phase change liquid metal pad for our Core i9 series. So what it is, is a uh, everyone either use a thermal paste or liquid metal uh, cooling, but uh, liquid metal have a lot of problems like crystallization, leaking and all this other stuff. While thermal paste, you know, it doesn't have that good of a performance. So what we're doing is we use this new materials in normal room temperature, it will be a piece of solid metal. And when it's heated up, it will become liquid metal. So you have best of both worlds to cool your systems because, you know, cooling is the biggest matter for gamers out here. So with that type of cooling, do you have any idea what type of clocks it can, it can sustain either on the GPU or CPU? Uh, we are seeing a roughly about five to eight percent more sustainable um, clock rate above the normal cooling, um, but obviously we anticipate it to be uh, higher when Intel and Nvidia launch the final drivers uh, within a week or two, and uh, by the time end users will get the unit in the market, they will be able to uh, test it out for themselves. But we are seeing a huge difference. The performance-wise, like in benchmark-wise, we're looking at roughly about ten percent minimum, um, more. Uh, more than if you had another cooling solution. Correct. So with or without the, the phase change liquid metal pad, we're seeing roughly about 10% difference on the performance. Wow, great. So uh, what can you tell us about the screen on the Stealth? Yeah, so the screen, we do have a lot of different options. We have the 4K 120 hertz. We have the QHD 240 hertz. We also have the Full HD 360 hertz, depending on whichever configurations you like, because there are people who want 4K, uh, but there are people who want 360 hertz uh, options. So we have um, a wide range of stuff for people to choose from. So we have a question from a viewer. Uh, Javier asks, does it run with USB power delivery or is there a specific charger? 
Okay, that's a great question. So all of uh, most of our high-end laptops, like our Stealth GS and our Raider GE and Vector GP, they all do have the USB-C um, power support. But as of currently right now, it's not in full power because something like this, we're using roughly about like you know two hundred watt, three hundred watt power on on certain high-end models. So. Um, we are not able to do, do a full power, but if you just normally, um, you know, just driving roughly about 20 something watt off the USB, then this one will be able to do it just off the Thunderbolt port. Great. Um, another question, I know this is the stealth, but is there any like RGB or, or lighting options for when I'm at home and I, I want to show off? Okay. Of course. So uh, as I say, this one is a stealth. Stealth have the name being like, you know, um, less less RGB, less cool and stuff like that. We still continue our Raider GE series. Uh, our Raider GE series is a uh, well-known, our, you know, best of the performance uh, unit out there. So uh, as you can see, it have the really cool RGB light bar in the front. Um, both of this series, they will also go all the way up to the Core i9, which the Raider GE will do the i9, uh, i9 HK. And then um, both of them do also have a perky RGB keyboard, which you can't really tell in this, you know, lighting settings. Oh, both of them do. Cool. I noticed it doesn't actually look that much thicker than the Stealth as well. Like, what are the, the dimensions? Um, it's, it's, it's a little bit thicker. Oh, I see. Yeah. When you if close you, it, when you close it, uh, as you can see, it is quite a bit different because okay. uh, the point of having the Raider GE series is this one, we do able to overclock. So for example, the 3080 Ti, we're able to push all the way up to 220 watt full power, uh, just for the CPU and GPU alone. So we're talking about roughly about 25, 30 watt over um, any other laptop out there. So this Raider GE had always been uh, one of the top benchmark series out in the market uh, over throughout the whole last year. So we really want to push our limit again this year and hopefully this will still sit at you know, top of the line in the performance. So you or a user or viewer asks, why aren't more laptops QHD? I can see 1080p because of the skies of the screen, even though it seems a lot of programs need a little more space. But why don't I don't get why makers jump to 4K instead of QHD? Uh, we actually do have QHD. Both of them have, as I say, we have the 120 hertz uh, 4K. They have the 240 QHD and also 360 uh, Full HD. The reason why you don't, like most of the end users don't really see that much QHD out there is number one, the demand of that is higher. Number two, the supply of that is smaller. Uh, the reason is there's only like one to two supplier in the QHD high refresh rate. Uh, and that's the reason you don't really see that many in the market um majorly is because of supply issue i feel like qhd is like the perfect size for a laptop to me because when it when the screens are like even 17 inches i feel like 4k is getting diminishing returns so it, it's good to hear that you have that as an option yeah um 4k is usually for a lot of people who is really wanting it to use it for like you know, sometimes content creations or they mm -hmm. really like some 4K content uh, to watch and stuff. But uh, most of the users, they really ask us for either the QHD 240 or the Full HD 360, depending if they want the uh, high resolutions or high refresh rate. Speaking of creators, uh, we have another comment uh, or question from a viewer. Is there an OLED panel? What, what type of material are these panels made from? Um, so we do not have OLED panel this year. We uh, last year we do have mini LED options mm. um, on our most of this uh, gaming series that we have right here is all just the normal um, LED panels. So in the our creator series, the one in front of me right here, um, this is the creator Z17 and our cre uh, creator Z16P over in here. This two, we use um, a 100% uh, DCI-P3 panels. Uh, and those are uh, both of them is uh, the QHD uh, options. 
And uh, the biggest difference between our gaming series and our content creation series is that the content creation series, we want to keep it most of them as the 16 by 10 golden ratio mm. because it gives you more um, more real estate per se in your, in your, in your um, screen. And you actually see more because you're actually able to go ahead and, you know, see a lot more on the bottom piece in here. It's roughly about 10% more um, area. Uh, while the gaming side, we're still keeping at 16 by 9 because most of the, the games out there, you're very used to the 16 by 9. So that's why we're still keeping the 16 by 9 in there. That, that makes sense. So speaking of... Uh... Speaking of your creator laptops, you have uh, an innovation here, the first 17-inch laptop with pen support, correct? Correct. So uh, as I say in here, um, we launched the Creator Z16 last year, and uh, it was just a finger touch options. Uh, a lot of people have been asking us for a pen touch option on the screen. And because most of them are so used to, you know, using a two in one, a lot of them may even carry out a, a drawing pad with them uh, on the go. And we were like, well, why do you have to carry extra things when you when we can build it into the screen? So uh, in this generation on the both the Z16P and the created Z17, we're able to uh, go ahead and use it with the pen touch as well. And our MSI pen uh, have a few different features. Number one, this one is a USB charge. So you don't have to worry about going out and buy a battery with it. And then it's also, you know, stay with the laptop by itself. It will just be there. It, you won't be able to lose it. Sorry. And these are all older, like 12th gen laptops uh, with the new mobile 12th gen chips from Intel? Correct. Everything that I'm showcasing in here, they are all using the older like 12th gen um, H CPU. Okay. And they're up to RTX 3080 Ti. Is that different from gaming and content creation laptops? Or um, So the four that I just showcased, they uh, the Stealth GS77, the Raider GE, the Creator 17, uh, the Creator Z17 and the Creator Z16P, all of them can go uh, up to i9 and also 3080 ti great yeah we do have other series that is not pushing that high to the limit uh there are series that is you know doing a little bit lower than the specs in here okay um, and the reason why we're able to push the 3080 ti in this really thin and lifelong factor of um of our created Z series is that uh, on our Z16P, we are actually using vapor chamber options in there as well. So the vapor chambers will be able to allow uh, the unit to cool enough to do a full performance because most of the content creators, they either push the CPU or GPU, um, they don't push them simultaneously. So using the vapor chamber, you get the best out of both. Speaking of cooling, you're introducing a new phase change liquid metal pad, correct? Correct. Yeah, so those are in our high-end gaming like the Stealth uh, GS77 and the Raider GE. Uh, so those usually, like right now, we're only introducing it into the Core i9 units. Uh, as I say before, it's the the material is, is awesome. Um, you won't have to worry about reapply um, like a year or two because one of the uh, liquid metal problem is number one is hard to apply uh it's very messy uh it could you know leak and then cause problem with the motherboard and everything uh the other one is it's crystallized over the years so you you might have best performance on the first few months and then it will just start dropping but with this new material you won't be able like you won't be facing any of that problem you have the best of both worlds so how does that work? How does it how does it improve the cooling? Um, so the the number one thing is the liquid metal is because uh, it's, it's performs better because what it's filled up all the gaps in between the the heat sink and and the chip. Um, so the heat conduct is better. Um, the biggest problem before is you know um, even the thermal paste you might not be 
you know, having it covering the whole area or it might not be covering all the holes in between. Even though it's very microscopic, you can't see it. But in the liquid form factor, you will basically fulfill the, all the gaps in between any of them. Uh, so that's the reason why it will be able to perform that much better uh, comparing to the thermal pad. Another new feature I understand you've implemented is uh, is some new AI in in MSI in MSI Center, correct? Correct. So um, for us, you know, other than just um, you know doing the greatest and bad as um, hardware out there in for for the customers to play with, uh, we really care about user experience. So. Uh, one of the user experience that we see uh, that we have heard a lot of complaint is a lot of customers in our MSI centers, you have the choice to go full performance or a balance mode or a battery saving mode. Inside there, most of them, they set one and then they forgot about it. And then turn around a few months later, they complain, hey, my performance is not as well because they were setting it in the battery saving mode or the battery wasn't great because they were setting it in the performance mode. So in this new series that we launched we have the smart auto AI. So basically what it does is the end users don't even have to worry about what they're doing. They will be able to see uh, exactly what they are, um, like the laptop will figure out what they're doing. For example, if they're playing games, it will go into the performance mode. And then if their battery is low and they are just doing nothing, then they will go into the battery saving mode. Or if you just reply an email and stop, it will go into the balance mode. So it will just hit, like jump between those modes. Uh, that way, the end users will get the best experience out of all world for them. So I understand one of the new features is, is it detects ambient noise. How does that work? And is my privacy safe if it's listening? <laughs> So one of the things that, you know, a lot of us are doing these days is we stay at home and we do conference call or we do video calls with uh, a lot of people. So most of the time we don't want to hear the fan noise behind it. So that's why we turn it into the silence mode and inside. Um, so um, that way we will be able to, to do a lot less um, control and stuff like that. So in our silent, the new silence mode, we will be able to hear the ambient noise and figuring out how noisy is the background and that it will allow the fan noise to go up to the point. Uh, so you won't hear the fan noise, but in the same time, you still get more performance out of it. Uh, but by doing so, no one will have to worry about, you know, the security feature and stuff because it wasn't really listening to what you're saying. It's just listening to the overall noise level uh, for the silence mode. And then um, that's one of the, the coolest things that, you know, we, we think that will provide end users to have uh, better performance out of all, all of them. Uh, on top, we also do have another noise cancellation features, what we call the sound tune AI also. So in that part, we are able to noise cancellation um, uh, other side of the call. So most of the features that you have, for example, Zoom or uh, Microsoft Teams and stuff like that, you're able to noise cancellation yourself. But a lot of people, they forgot to noise cancellation. And like, for example, for me in my uh, weekly calls, I have a sales who always have a gardener cutting grass during the same time as really noisy. Uh, for us, we will be able to go one click and I can noise cancellation the other side as well. That way I can hear them clearly in the same time. I will also noise cancellation myself, which they will hear me clearly. So that's another features uh, that we are going to be implement. All three features that I just talked about will be in all of our series, including our gaming series, our content creation series, and also our business series. So by noise cancellation, it also would include things that the fans can't control, like a screaming baby or something like that? Uh, if the baby continuously crying, it will cut it down quite a bit. But if the, if the baby all of a sudden do a very high pitch, then it might not be picking up. Uh, but we'll fine tune that <laughs> down the road. Hopefully, we can control that. Uh, most of the most of the noise cancellation area that what we're doing is we're basically equalizing the, the other than you know a voice uh, frequency. Uh, we kind of like pushing down everything else. So a baby crying is technically that range. So you might still hear some of that. <laughs> Regarding um, Avram's privacy question, 
Uh, is this then done locally, like on your computer? It doesn't have to interact with the cloud at all, or? Yeah, everything that I just talk about is implemented locally. It's never feed anything to the cloud. And also, um, all of these features is included, but end users have the choice to turn them off. To turn it, great. Yeah, I assume is that, able to do it. that that's why you're able to, to move noise cancel incoming audio as well, just because the computer is is affecting it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Awesome. Um, I know you have other products to show off, but before we move on to those, I do have a user question uh, regarding the creator uh, laptop with the pen. Um, is the pen touch pressure sensitive? Yes, uh, this one is using the same uh, Microsoft technology. So it does have the 1000 something um, pressure pointers. I don't remember exactly the, the numbers, but it's over a thousand uh, point pressure. And uh, it's also come with multiple different tips. So if you like to use it as drawing or writing or whatever, it'll have different tips for it as well. And does the pen come with the laptop? Uh, for all the models uh, in U.S. markets, all of those that comes uh, with the pen touchscreen, it will also come with the pen uh, inside the box as well. So Great. end users don't have to worry about it. And if and when, if you just really lose it, then we do sell the pen by itself as well. Do you have uh, buttons on the pen for like hotkeys and shortcuts and stuff? Yep. So uh, this one, when you first set it up, you have to you know connect it through a Bluetooth. So it does have a button like on the top and also two buttons in this side as well. So um, if you really take a look at this, um, it will have a, you know, you can use this as a eraser button per se. Mm -hmm. And then for the PowerPoint, you can just use this to. Oh, OK. Through. Yeah. So gotcha. uh, and all of them are programmable. You can just set it up and, you know, try it out yourself. It's a, it's a very light pen because it doesn't have a battery in there. Um, and, you know, the, the buttons is, is all configurable depending on which way you want to do. Great. I assume, do I configure those through the Windows pen settings or yep. through MSI? Okay. Yeah. So there's no like extra MSI center integration or? No, no, no. Um, so what we do is we do have the MSI center as a whole, but within there, uh, all the features that I talked about, end users will have the choice of uh, canceling them or um, not, not using them at all. Uh, but obviously, all the features is there uh, for everything that people want. They can go ahead and choose and pick whichever one they want. Great. I think this is is pretty exciting because uh, personally, I, I tend to associate MSI with gaming. And I know this isn't your first productivity product, but uh, a pen is like, I feel like something that a pretty different audience than like the Raider series would use. Yeah. So. Yeah, so that's what we have been. Uh, we we have been using this pen for our submit series, which is our two in one flip. Um, people really like it because it's it's very easy to use. It's very um, you know, it's just built in into the the windows and everything. Uh, so we we continue to do that, and that's the reason why a lot of those customers is like, hey, we want more full power in the creator laptop with the pen. Is it possible? And that's why we work with the panel makers to come out a 17 inch pen touch uh, panels to put it into our creator z17 great i'm curious to see what more like productivity gear you make in the future yeah that's definitely something that will continue to to build more uh down the road we will even you know convert our workstation series uh using the same chassis because this is the this is the chassis that a lot of our customers really like uh, because it's it's very chic and very um, you know content creators they 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 don't like that much of a flashier design per se uh, they they can't have RGB for work or whatever but something like this they will definitely carry around with them. Okay, before I I don't want to belabor the point too much. Before I move on, uh, I know you said it's included with the laptop, but you also said you can get it a la carte. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you, do can we know the price of it? Is that a uh, the, sure. Yeah, the price should be around a hundred dollars. Okay. Yeah, that's not terrible then. It's it's comparing to uh, other com like competitors, like other brands out there. Uh, for this kind of features, we believing that the pen, like the price is right. Um, 
because we're not trying to make a profit. We try to, you know, create something that people really like and something that is makes the whole experience for them to use the laptop uh, even better. So I know you've got some other laptops for folks that have a, somewhat of a lower budget or are looking for a custom theme. For example, uh, you have a Rainbow Six laptop. <laughs> yep. So um, we finally going to come out uh, one of our special editions that is not in our Raider GE series. Uh, we have always been doing our special edition on our high end Raider GE and on our high specs, but people do complain to us and ask us that, you know, they don't have $4,000 to, to spend on a cool laptop. Uh, and this year we go ahead and do it on our uh, Crosshair series, our Crosshair GL series. So uh, right in front of me here, as you can see, uh, it does have a very unique look. Uh, I have the, the logo, the Rainbow Six logo. You can't really tell in detail there is a map of LA underneath it because that's what the game is take place at. Uh, overall wise, it have a lot of uh, engraving. It looks kind of like, you know, the Dropbox crate uh, from the game. Um, in the front, obviously, you get a very cool wallpaper. On top of the wallpaper, you also come with the game uh, and a mouse and a mouse pad that comes along with it. So you have the full um, battle pack per se. Um, and also the key wise, the WSD key is a clear key. And then the backlight is like yellow, uh, blue and green to enhance the, the overall color schemes of this um, game itself. But you see there are other designs in the touchpad and also in the in the palm rest as well. So this is something that uh, we want to try it out and get a feel that is a little bit different than our usual, you know, Dragon edition. Uh, we have had work with a lot of different uh, game out there before, like, you know, um, the Assassin's Creed, uh, for, you know, with WoW, with um, a lot of different, you know, game publishers before. And this time we think that this Rainbow Six Editions is something that it's fit really well in uh, what we're looking at. And hopefully this will, you know, give a more budgetable customers uh, a choice to, to get their hands on some of our limited edition models. Oh, Avram, it seems like you're muted. Oops. I'm trying to noise. I'm trying to manually noise filter for screaming children. Yeah. Next um, time, next time, use the MSI laptop, and you'll. Be yeah, ready. maybe that. Maybe that would help me. So, uh, so anyway, I wanted to ask about the difference between you have a, several laptops that are kind of mid mid range series in the Crosshair, the Pulse, the Katana, and the Sword. Uh, how would you describe the difference between these different lineups? Okay. Great question. So uh, obviously our high end stuff is the Stealth, Infinity Light, and then the more powerful units are our Raider and our Vector, which is used to be called the GP series. Those are our high end stuff. And then the mid range, we do have our Crosshair, the one in front of me, and the Pulse. So the biggest difference between the Crosshair and the Pulse is that uh, Pulse is using the gun battle uh, design. It's a very, I would say lower key, uh, you are, you're not trying to uh, push that much noise out there. Uh, while the crosshair this year is all about, you know, style. Uh, you're basically coming out and telling people I'm having a gaming laptop. Uh, and the crosshair, this one will also be able to do a little bit overclock a full power uh, performance while the, the pulse is more about balancing uh, between the battery life and also the performance in that area. And then the entry level, the, the you know, one thousand dollar price range area, we do have our katana and the sword. Katana being a red backlight on the black unit, and then the sword is the teal blue backlight in the white units. Uh, so those are the way how you differentiate our more entry level and our mid range level series. Where does the vector fit in? So the vector uh, is something that a lot of people 
do want a full power uh, units like our Raider GE, but in the same time, they cannot convince their boss to, to offer to buy because they have all the RGB and very screaming, like, you know, this is a gaming laptop. So the one in front of me right here, uh, as you can see, this one is using the core black design, kind of like our stealth units. Uh, this one will still have a, you know, a full power uh, performance mode. And this one will still be able to have a Quina HK all the way up to 3080 graphic. Um, basically, most of the features that the Raider GE has, we do also have it in our Vector GP. Uh, but this one is a more, what we used to build it for the IT guys or like people who don't really want to screen gaming. Because uh, as you can see, most of our series, we have one that is really out there, like showing off, like I am a gamer. And there is also another series that's very similar, but kind of take a step back, you know, chilled and not be so much loud as being like, I'm a gamer look. So uh, there's a lot of difference between those two. So the vector is almost kind of like a, a chonky or stealth in a way. Uh, yes. And in the same time, it's more like a, um, like a low key raider. Okay. Yeah. Uh, kind I of do in have between. A, I do have a question about the crosshair really quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, is there going to be a, a non Rainbow Six version uh, refreshed for this year? Or? Yeah, so there will be a non Rainbow Six edition because the Rainbow Six edition is a limited edition. So the biggest difference is uh, the logo in here in the front. Uh, it will be the MSI logo. Okay. And then also the one in the palm rest area uh, will also be the MSI. Is it still uh, going to have that yellow styling? Yep. Because I love the yellow styling. Yeah. So we will still keep the rest of the color schemes into our normal edition um, crosshair as well. Okay. Because we want to try it out. A lot of people is, you know, kind of bored from all the black and red and metal color so that's why we want to come out and be like hey we want something that really eye-catching people can know that you're playing game like a mile away okay let's say i'm a huge rainbow six fan but i want something more powerful than the crosshair is that something that you're considering like implementing the the theming on a different laptop or is this just testing the waters or um, every year we, we try different options. Uh, mm -hmm. For this year, we're only doing the Rainbow Six in Crosshair. Uh, but maybe down the road, you know, mid-year will come out and add a special edition on another series and we'll see how it goes. Because every year we come out two to three special edition um, when like based on game launch or based on you know end users uh, feedback and things like that. Uh, kind of like last year, we also do a special edition on our Creative Z series with a uh, very famous uh, graphic designers uh, um, with I remember Japan. that. Yeah. I got so while we're talking special editions, um, I do want to because I know we are coming up on time and I want to make sure we cover this. I understand you have another collaboration product uh, to, to show off or talk about. Uh, yeah, so we do have it in the other series for the um, for the component side. We do have it for the Evangela uh, series. So uh, every every different products, we we kind of co work with different people to see uh, which one they like and everything like that. So um, most of the people will see it in you know in the next few days when the press comes out. And unfortunately, we don't have a showcase in CS right. Anymore. Okay. Sorry. So for those who aren't aware, um, you know, Asus always comes out with their, their Gundam parts that they continually do. And MSI is now coming out with, uh, you know, Neon Genesis Evangelion parts uh, in that sort of purple and green color. Uh, it's got a case. It's got a motherboard. It's got a, what else? Power do you supply. Have? A power supply. Yeah. We're also working on and some peripherals. Yeah. So uh, for coverage on that, you can check out tomshardware.com. Uh, sorry to bring it up when you don't <laughs> no, have no, no, it show, but it is a really cool uh, get for you. I'm excited to to sort of see the parts. Yeah, we we are we're definitely trying out to see what fits because, uh, for example, the component guys they are more 
um, hardcore <laughs> per se in in this uh, you know comic book or like you know anime style. So that's where we we push it more into the component stuff on that on that series. So we have time for one more question. And it's very relevant to building your own PC, but also to laptops. Uh, Javier asks, are they easy to expand? I think he's talking about in all of the laptops you've shown today. Are, is RAM soldered and are there any available expansion slots? Uh, basically everything that I showcase uh, in the gaming here, uh, it is not soldered on. Um, all of them should be able to access both memory and SSD, just move, removing the D-side cover, because that's something that we have been doing for the past year or two to, to do that. Um, I think that's only one series that is, I'm not showcasing here, which is Stealth 15M. That one might not be able to access those uh, through only open up the bottom cover. Um, and then in our Creative Z series, you should be able to access the memory as well. See, that's a big plus. Not every laptop, we can tell you because we check, not <laughs> every laptop can do that. A lot of companies make it really hard for you. Yeah. To the the reason why we don't do that originally is you. it's actually make the laptop thicker because yeah. you need to flip the motherboard and overall everything have to be thicker. So it's the difference between do I want to save another one or two millimeters on the thickness or do I want to give you know end users the capability? I'm curious then, you said that you can access the memory on the Creator series, which is one of the, the thinner ones that mm -hmm. you showed off today, right? Yep. Uh, those, this is the, the creative series that I'm talking about. Okay. So that's yeah. good to hear then. Cause, uh, I know that having, uh, soldered Ram or non soldered Ram, uh, on a thin laptop is very difficult. Yeah. It's just, uh, the, 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 the whole reason why, you know, uh, some series is soldered on is to, is to really push the thickness because, mm -hmm. um, you, you actually save another millimeters. So basically, if you think about this, the whole laptop, we only talk about 15 to 18 millimeters. So every millimeter count. I noticed that you have a, I know that we're, we're running up on time, but I noticed you have a couple of laptops sitting off to your side that I don't think you've shown off yet, uh, sitting off to your left. Um, no, I think I, I have everything in here. Uh, okay. we, we don't really showcase, um, our, uh, our business units, like mm. our business and, and, you know, productivity units, because those are all using the P series and those will not be able to come out in the market until a month or two later. Uh, so down the road, we will definitely come out uh, the whole series and let customers know. But most of the things that we do over in there is a new color. Uh, but we also do have uh, new features on softwares. Uh, for example, in our, uh, our submit series, our top end series, we have something called the Toby Aware. Uh, basically, back in the days, everyone had the 3M screen cover um, just to be, you know, protectivities on your, you know, on your privacy. So what we do is in that one, you will be able to, uh, the laptop will recognize if someone's peeking behind you. And if it does, then the screen will go blur. Uh, so that's uh, some extra features that we are introducing in Ooh. our business unit. That's, I, I I look forward to testing that. That would be really cool. That would be really cool to see. I've seen yeah. that in, in competing laptops. Um, and it, it's definitely cool seeing you get these uh, IP collaborations, but also these, these software features as well. I have yeah. not seen it though, where it auto detects someone someone sneaking up on you, only where you can manually activate. It's, it's called Toby, um, and it's, yeah, Toby it's like aware. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we do. So they have two different features. One is someone's peeking behind you, and the other one is if your eyes is away from your screen, then it will also blur the screen itself. So uh, it will. It's obviously that's extra features that you can turn on or off, but. Uh, we've been always trying to do the security screen for our business unit for years uh, without sacrificing the brightness and the colors and everything. So back to the gaming stuff real quick mm -hmm. while we wrap up. When can we expect these to be available for folks to buy? So uh, everyone can start placing the order in, fe uh, in January 25th at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, so you should be able to, you know, click buy now during that time, um, across, you know, all the major retailers, retailers, uh, and you should be able to pick up the unit in February 1st, um, or they will ship it to you at February 1st. That should be the shipping embargo. 
Great. Well, thank you so thank you so much, Cliff, for your time and for showing us all these amazing products. Uh, obviously, if folks want to learn more, we have some coverage on Tom'sHardware.com, and also I assume there's lots of details on MSI.com as well. All right. Thank you so much. Very nice talking Thanks to you. Thanks for joining us, so Cliff. Bye, everyone. Later. Bye.